Like, talk to me about the training that went in at the beginning to make you great. And like, what do you do still today to make yourself better? Well, when I was humiliated, like going to the doors with my mentor, hiding in the bushes and listening to what I actually said, I realized how terrible I was. When I first got to this job, when I first came to the recruiting event, which is at Top Golf, I wore a suit with a tie. Everybody's there in sneakers and shorts. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Doesn't fit in. And I thought, all these people don't know what they're doing. I'm just going to eat this alive. I know everything. I could teach them some things. So when I went on those doors and humiliated myself is when I became humble and realized I have to throw out everything I ever, ever, ever learned in the past, including my ego or thinking that I know more than anybody else, which is part of ego. And that's when I began to listen with my ears and shut my mouth and start really taking notes and processing um, everything that I needed to do to do this job. And I, that's when I realized I had to memorize the pitch, my tonality, and I had to talk slower, softer, so people would pull in and listen to me. And that's when I far, started realizing that I had to learn what, what it took to do this job. When I was receptive, that's when I started to excel and improve. Love that. No, and I, 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 I think there's people that have been doing this for probably two, three years even that still have not had that moment. You know what I mean? Like, they're just like, I'm okay living average, but their ego is, is getting in the way in the sense of like, okay. Their ego is getting in the way in the sense of like, oh, well, I don't want to admit the fact that I need to go search and train harder. And the hardest thing in our industry is to get people to relax and put down their shoulders and be receptive to the, the way, of, way of our canvassing neighborhoods and knocking doors because they knew something before. So I try, to, I try to really connect with them and say, look, I was where you were in the past. I knew everything. And, and I'm sure you know a lot of great things, but we gotta put that to the side. Maybe later on you can incorporate that. And for now, it's a whole new way of life, a whole new way of doing things. So just, I implore you, memorize your pitch and follow some of our trainings and you're gonna kill it because the most important thing is following our process, following the pitch, and getting out there and just knocking doors. So, so, so let's 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 talk about that, like getting out there and the knocking doors. Because obviously now you've done it for a few years. Um, what keeps you motivated? I mean, last year you did 270 installed, which is you know a, a heck of a lot of money. Like at that point, the money doesn't really motivate. Maybe it does motivate, but like <clears throat> what 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 gets you? Staying consistent, because what you'll see in solar is a lot of guys will go out, they'll sell, they'll make a ton of money in a short amount of time, and then they just like cave off. Like they're just like, Pff. what do you, what, what keeps you going even though you're making good money and, and, and fast? Like, like how do you stay driven? Well, I have to say that my previous company was pretty good, okay? But I was just an okay guy over there with some potential. I was showing some potential. I started to get out on the leaderboard and things like that. But when I came over to Legacy, just something just really clicked with the way they have their tools and their leaderboards that I wanted to be on the top. I just wanted to be on the top. And when I got in the first week, I was just so enthusiastic about the new company and the love that I felt that I really just wanted to embrace it. And then I saw my name on the top of the leaderboard. And once I saw my name on the top of the leaderboard, I wanted to stay there. Yeah. I felt very competitive here. They just, they just do something at, at, at Legacy that makes me want to excel. If I see people on my group me, if I see people on the grid, we call it, um, getting throwing down deals and I'm not, it makes me want to just get out of the house and do more, do more, do more. So I think ha ha part of it for me is competition and, and the love that I feel about around the organization. I feel at home here, but also Beyond that, people always ask me, well, you just got, like, a lot of my colleagues, my friends, they'll say, hey, I just see that you just got one of those big checks again this week on Wednesday. And you're, like, out on the doors on Thursday. I mean, that, that's, like, big money, and you're out on the doors. How do, you, how do you do that? And I'm, like, well, because there's a bigger why. It's, it's a bigger why. It's not just money for me. If, if I don't need the money, I could share it with others. If, if it's not about the money, it's about helping these families. These families, when I leave their house, they're saying, thank you. If you do solar right, you're helping families. Yeah. You're helping families save money, prevent future increases, and increasing the value of the home if you do it right. So that's a good thing. And on top of that, while you're doing that, you're helping our planet, which is wholesome. It makes me feel heartfelt that I'm purposeful, that I'm doing something at every home I enroll that 
goes solar, I am making a difference. So it's a notch on my belt. Mentally, I have a notch on my belt that it's another family off the grid that can be helping the environment for cleaner, cleaner air, right? And then thirdly is I'm helping, you know, my why. So we're helping the planet, we're helping the families, and we're helping our own why. So those big three things together make for an amazing force to keep me motivated. So even if the big check comes in, what about those families that need you? And what about your why? And what about the planet? What about helping the planet? And your goal is to just continue to set records so that more and more people can have solar and we can breathe cleaner air. So I, I, I constantly, I call it the great green movement. You the know? great green movement. It's, yes. it's crazy how, how that is happening. I mean, I'm literally at Epcot yesterday. We go on a ride and it talks about like writing out your future and the future of energy talked about like wave energy and then talks about solar and it talks about wind and you're just like man like in in 20 years everything will be renewable it's like why why would we not have renewable energy so i think it, it's cool to say we're pioneers we're we're instigators we're initiators of this green wave which is really cool it's so amazing and um i like the fact that i'm constantly learning and reinventing to help others get to be the best version of themselves. So one of the things I just discovered the other day is the number one objection in solar is, well, what if I'm moving and the people don't want the solar? <clears throat> We're all trained to look at them like they have three eyes and go, they don't want solar, who wouldn't want solar? But I just took it to another level the other day. I just realized, I said, where do, where do you think the landscape is going to be in your community five years from now? How many homes do you think in five years are gonna have solar in your community? What if you don't go solar and you're the only, the question to ask is, what if you're the only home in the community that doesn't have solar? Then what are you gonna do? Bam, throw down the mic and now the people are like <laughs> on board, right? That's so good. But, but I love, I get goosebumps just thinking about how yeah. we could keep reinventing how to explain this because people are afraid. Yep. People are hard to adapt and we're doing God's work in helping our planet. But we must, we must use and find techniques to help these families feel at ease and feel comfortable. And then of course we must do the right thing. We must do the right thing so they have an amazing renewable energy experience. I love that. Yeah, what if what if you're the only one that isn't? Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, you're driving around in a diesel truck and everybody else is in electric trucks and you're like, look at me. And everybody looks at you and goes, really? Like you're still the guy. tomatoes yeah. at you. Yeah, yeah, you're still that guy that's like yeah. refusing to help our world. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, Okay, so what, what are some tips you give your salespeople? Just like a lot of these guys are salespeople trying to figure out how to, how to sell those two <clears throat> deals a month, let alone 34 deals in 14 days. You know, like what are tips you give your salespeople to, to be successful in this? Well, I tell them there's a sense of urgency. I mean, there's a lot of incentives and benefits right now, okay? And right now there's a good reward in, in solar in our compensation, right? We don't know when that's going to end. We don't know how, when tomorrow is. And anybody in any career doesn't know that. You could walk into your job tomorrow and your boss tells you that, you know, we have to let you go. Or you could walk into your job tomorrow and turn on the TV and it says COVID-19 hit and the entire restaurant industry is shut down. So I try to, you know, instill in them that, look, the time is now, the time is today. We just do not know what tomorrow will bring. So we've got to get out there today, help the families today while these incentives are here, enroll them, help your why, help the families and help our planet. Love that. So it's just this urgency play. And I think a lot of people, it's like the biggest nation I always say is procrastination. I like that. So yeah. it's just like, you know, so many people are like, oh, I want to make a lot of money someday. And I'm yeah. kind of like, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, why don't you make a lot of money today? Like the time is now. I love that. Um, That's so my edict for 2021 is the time is now. Too much, too much, too, too often people say tomorrow, 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 or someday. Yep. The time is now. You've got to get out there now and you have to do it now. And it's such a simple process. Don't trust yourself. Trust your leaders, trust your peers, trust the experts in the industry. When they tell you it's a numbers game, memorize your pitch, follow your process, it really works. You just have to get out there and do it and work.